Hello, apa kabar semuanya? My name is Vincent and welcome back to the analytics class lesson 4, practice pattern for data analytics, HR detention predictions. And we are going to focus on getting your hands dirty. So, last week we have covered the stocks prediction and how the step by step approach of doing that using iPython notebook. So, this week we are going to talk about HR setting in the predicting employee retention. Then, at the week 3 and week 4, hopefully, the next one I'm going to do social media trends. I'm going to talk about Twitter, media, or maybe big data in general analytics. And afterwards, the next week, yeah, I'm going to follow with optimization process, syntax media. So all of these uh, problem settings that I have found right now is actually based on my uh, interviews with some of the business practitioners and business students in SMU. So I hope that it applies well to you as well, regardless of what department that you are or you're just interested to learn. Okay. So now for predicting employee retention, we are going to turn this data into HR superpower investment. Why? Because you can get a glimpse of the future of who's going to exceed your company. And to that, we are going to load the Kaggle employee retention analytics data set. So I'm going to talk to you about Kaggle later. And we are going to explore and understand the data sets. We are going to start with viewing the data, what the data could offer us. We are going to talk about the profile of all of the living employees. And finally, in the exploration process, we are going to do correlation analysis, whether each of the factor is correlated to each other and therefore contributed to us or the employees leaving the company. And afterwards, based on the exploratory analysis, then I decided that maybe we can uh, talk about department analysis. So finding out who leaves out from each of the department, like sales, marketing, technology, and we can do analysis of these sales department leaving. And finally, we are going to predict the retention of the employees using the historical data and adjust it back with the same uh, kind of knowledge that we have for future employees. And to that, we are going to use two different models. We are going to focus on SVM, Support Factor Machine, and second, Decision Tree Analysis. Don't worry if you don't know what this means at current moment. We are going to get you to step by step. Okay? And finally, we are going to generate this model and together with other classification models and afterwards we are going to evaluate them for predictions. And finally, we are going to talk about these models, try to compare it with the existing data set and see how effective this model. And we are going to talk about the challenges, what we could do to improve our analysis. All right, so that's the agenda for this tutorial. And moving on, we are going to talk about classification problems. So, this is a classification problem because from historical data sets, from, for example, we know like how long these guys have been working in the company, uh, how long these guys usually work in the companies for each day, or maybe uh, which department is this guy. From these kind of uh, predictors or uh, variables, then we want to predict whether this employee is considered going to leave or not going to leave. Okay? So, we want to classify and group the people that we have in these two different categories. Therefore, it's classification because you are classifying this data. Okay, given that you don't know, oh, uh, these people is going to leave or not in the future, but you have the data about their profiles. So you want to predict that. Okay, and there are two models that you can do in order to help you do classification. First of all, is the support factor machine, or the simpler version support factor criteria, and second is decision tree. And uh, for the support factor machine and decision tree, I'm going to explain to you because this is going to be the interesting and important points for our model generation. Right? So for SVM support factor machine, what is SVM? So SVM 
separates the largest distance to the nearest training data points of any class by using hyperplanes. So what does it mean? What does SPM largest distance and hyperplanes mean? So what it means is that imagine that you have the data in front of you that you want to specify whether these certain data points are women or men by their weight and their size or heights. Okay? And you know that uh, you don't know like who they are, but you know that given the historical data sets, that most of the men have high weight and high size, taller and heavier than women. Okay, so SBM is actually leveraging on this kind of decision boundaries, and therefore will put the lines in the middle of the plot, so that the next time that you put your model here, for example. So I have another point here, then what would it be? It would be for men because it is above these lines. Right? So that's what SVM does, but it's not stopping in that sense because it uses hyperplanes. So what is hyperplanes? This the whole chart is two variables, so weight and size, and in one plane. But hyperplanes meaning that what if you have more predictors, for example, head size or maybe ear size can, or maybe nose size, can you use that for your predictions of identifying women or men? Maybe you can. Therefore, you make 10 more others that are talking about this, so weight and nose size, weight and ear size, and so on. So you do those things in a multi-dimensional and after that, you put this decision uh, boundaries using this line or uh, there's a specific term for it is called maximum margin classifier but it's a very advanced and maybe talking more about it in an advanced class of machine learning but for now you should know that it's just a plane and a line to distinguish each so it's a very simple classification model right and the second one is decision tree so decision tree predicts a value of target variable by learning simple decision rules inferred from data features okay so imagine that you have uh, the rules that of these men and women uh, then you have um, uh, all of the men have high size so 100% if you see that the man is uh, the the person is tall then you can predict that it's man or maybe 90% rule so 90% of tall so if there are 90% of chance if you see a person at tall that they are men Okay, so you go through with this, but of course, mathematically you use various classifiers to do that kind of setting. But decision tree do that for you, so it does the probability wise, and then line up for you regarding what features are important to determine your classifications. All right, this will be much simpler when we go into the tutorial, and I'm going to walk you step by step. But for now, you can think of it as just a flowchart that funnels different kind of possibilities throughout uh, different um, predictors like height and size using historical data okay and based on that you can predict the future data all right okay so for this um, sake of tutorial i'm going to use a pattern notebook similar to the last week tutorial and for you that are interested to see the codes that i'm making you can check on this link at the PT. So let me open it for you. Okay, so this is my GitHub. You should be able to find a download button here. Um, since that this is my own profile, I couldn't find it, but you should be able to find download. And you can download and simply put it at the folder that you use for your. Um, uh, for your pattern analysis so just put it at here if you don't know where to find it then um refer back to my classes on basic high pattern of group and put it on that directory there and you'll be able to find it and run it by just by clicking on it okay so this is what you get at time right but to end this um tutorial let me just go through with you about this uh 
file this tutorial. So first of all, we are going to introduce the dataset from the Kaggle.com, right? And afterwards, we are going to um, okay, sorry for the lot scrolling. We are going to view the data. So we are going to understand whether the data is clean or dirty or is good for analysis. If not, then clean it up. Alright, so we are going to see that. And afterwards, we are going to explore. So explore is to find out about the data in the very simplest version. Like how many people that live. What is the distribution of each people that live and not live. Like uh, whether they are satisfied, unsatisfied, less evaluation. How many number of projects that people that need have and so on. So we want to find out their um, profiles. And we do have the profiles, we find conclusions. I'm going to go through step by step. And afterwards we are going to have correlation analysis. So to find out what are the kind of like variables that go and in hand together. For example, in this result I found that uh, people that works spend so many times at the office more likely to have more projects which is intuitive because like more projects meaning more work more more meaning that more time that you need to be in the office to meet up with people and so on but yeah there is definitely one thing that you can find that is the correlation analysis and afterwards we will delve further in the, the department analysis okay and afterwards we are going to start the predictions of model generation so we are going to use SPM as you can see here and we are going to use decision tree model as you can see here. Alright. And afterwards, to just to top up our accuracy for the models, we want to get a little sense of what it feels like using other models. And then we can chart them towards the results. So we can find accuracy of each model. Doing a bit of log loss. I'm going to explain to you about what this means, so don't worry about it. And finally, we are going to get a prediction data set. So imagine that this is using our future data. So I get a prediction of this. All right. So we are going to find out about that and how accurate this our model is. So that next time when you are employing somebody, you know uh, how you should approach it to minimize your employees and all. Okay. With that, that's all for my lessons and see you at the next lesson which is lesson 5. We are going to talk about marketing and social media trends. Apologies for the text there, I didn't replace it but I will replace it for you uh, when you open this presentation. So feel free to just open this repository below just to find the slides. And I will give you a playlist so that you can see how I explain this employee retention step by step. And hopefully you can use it the next time you are uh, promoted as an HR manager. With that, thank you so much. Terima kasih. Sampai jumpa. See you later in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.